And a big welcome back to Yak City Gaming, everybody, as once more we're going to pick up the Montreal Canadiens via GM mode here on the PS3 for Yak City Gaming. So as we left off last time, left you guys with a huge tease, I can't even get out of the screen to save it, so I've had to keep my PS3 on for a day and a half now. But uh, this is the trade deadline, so let's get to it and see what we end up with. Uh, looks like we got nothing, so let's shut down the phones. And oh boy, lots of action. Let's go again. And there's Florida calling. What do they want? They want McCarran and Karski for Kopetsky. That is a terrible deal, I'm going to say. Yeah, especially given McCarran being a 66 overall and three and a half gold stars at 19 years old. And Tukarski is our backup guy, so can't really afford to give, get rid of him at this point. We're not making any moves. It's just maybe somebody wants to make a move with us. I'd be really shocked not to see Calgary call, as you guys saw in the last episode. And I don't know why everyone thinks Tukarski is only worth a third-round pick. He's a lot more than that. So let's get through into another round here. I know I'm blitzing through it. And there we go, Curtis Glencross has gone to L.A., so they got rid of him. And Anaheim calls once more, what are they going to offer this time? A different third-round pick for Tukarski, still not interested. So should this be the second-last round, I'm going to say? Yes, there we go. And we are out of here. So that was pretty easy. That's the trade deadline. We'll simulate to the end of the season now. And we'll see what we end up doing. Riley Smith is actually leading in plus minus, which is really amazing. We picked him up in that uh, Tenorti deal, which was controversial. I had one guy hating on me for it, but you know what? It had to be done. Tenorti didn't really fit into the scheme that we're looking for. I mean, he's young, but we're not rebuilding. We're trying to win. And you know from the last episode, Johnny Boychuk and Mike Weaver are still out. And look at that. Johnny Boychuk is back. So let's get him into the lineup. As I don't know who Ellis is. Never heard of him before. And Boychuk back. Ellis out. And there's Boychuk back again. He'll be there. And we need to scratch Ellis. We did. Four and four lines. There we go. Boychuk. Not an emblem. There we go. All right, let's get to it. And here we go. As Against the Ducks, we win 3-2. So now we've got 30 wins on the season. That's not bad at all. 31 make it. Mike Weaver's set to return any day now. Pacioretty and Subban have combined for 80 points, leading respectively. So I can't complain about that. If they can push it to about 95, we should be able to make the playoffs. Carey Price leading the way with 27 wins. That was an overtime loss, so we're still getting points. That's at least an upside to losing if we can get points, especially down the stretch. Tampa Bay 37-21. and 21. Steven Stamkos has 92 points himself. Guy's just ridiculous. And now we need to put Mike Weaver back into the lineup. Weaver in, for you out, and four and four lines again, and there we go, Mike Weaver's back in, let's go. 3-2 loss to Tampa, didn't check that before, that hurts. Brandon Prust is out for right now. Bobby Ryan having an alright year in Ottawa, but we lose 4-2 to them, so Prust is out for two weeks, he's on the fourth line, no need to worry about that. And Pacioretty and Subban have eclipsed 80 points. And here we go against the Islanders. 6-2 win, that's huge. P.K. Subban picks up 51 assists on the season now. And they are just combining and racking up points. Another game against Tampa, that's a 2-0 shutout for Price. And then back-to-back -back against Florida. 2-1, all right, we are making steam now. 
We have a little bit of the season left. If we can gather five wins, we're in the playoffs, or so we should be. And we'll edit the lines manually and take a look at how close this is going to be. Scratch Barnival. And Moan, you're coming back in. There we go. All right, what did I do? Prutz, there we go. Perfect. So here we go as the next game is against the Sharks. So this is going to be a huge determining factor in how we finish off this season, if we finish it strong or not. I hope you guys liked the last episode. I didn't mention that so far in this little uh, commentary. So I want to hope that you guys enjoyed that. It was a change up from what I've normally done. And you know what? I think it worked all right. So that's why we're doing it again this time. And I'm just a lot more fired up for this one, knowing that the last one had a little bit of success. And here against Nashville, we're 34 and now 35 wins on the season. So uh, the Jets are up next. Subban's got to have a big game here, wheeling around against the Jets. The Jets have a similar record to us, and we skate to a 4-1 to win. All right, we are three wins away from the playoffs now. The Florida Panthers, this should be an easy win for us. They only have 30 wins on the season. They've got that losing record. We can do it. Yes, we can. Let's go. And a 3-1 loss. So, damn it, that one hurts. Next up is Tampa again. Back-to-back, -back, Florida and Tampa. And we'll see if we can pull something out of the hat. And a 4-2 loss. So now we've got probably have to win all our remaining games. We'll take a look at the schedule, or I mean standings, pardon me. And let's figure out what we've got going on. Team standings. Montreal is, oh, this is tough. We are not going to end up making the playoffs, it looks like. Boston appears to have us. We have five games remaining. We'd have to run the table and hope Boston doesn't get any points. Well, let's see what happens. Let's go. Capitals up first, at home, and then the Devils away. And... Come on. That's a win. All right. We're still in this. We've still got this. We can do it. Next up, New Jersey. They're 44 wins on the season, and that's a loss. That pretty much dooms us. We're pretty much out of it now. So we'll see if we can get a few more wins, string them together, and see if we can get in. We need to win against Florida. This, this is a huge game. There we go. 5-3. 5-3. Perfect. Stanix is injured. We need to fix that right away. We can't have some random guy filling in for him. This is huge. All right. Let's go. Coaching options. Edit lines. Barnaval, you can't be in there. Eller has to be in there. And Galchenyuk's up to an 86. All right, that looks solid. And Gallagher, how's Smith doing? Smith has 47 points on the season. Gallagher, how many do you have, buddy? 51, all right. All right, he's going up there. And that should make a more dynamic second line. And... Defense solid, all right. This is the team we got to run with. Price is ready for it. We've got two games remaining. It's all about to come down to this. Should have looked at the standings. We'll do that after this game and see if it's a possibility if we can make it in. 2-1 win. All right, where does that set us? Yeah, we are eliminated. 86 points. So no matter what happens against Toronto, we end up finishing out. That hurts. Yes, we'll be doing the draft in this GM mode episode as well, I guess. Pacioretty and Subban combined for 101 points together, and we still couldn't make the playoffs. This needs to be a win. There we go. 4-3, so we'll finish with 40 wins on the season. I guess up to the draft we go. 
So we'll see who the Stanley Cup champion will be, who wins the Calder Cup, and oh, we're two wins below the expectations. That hurts. Thought we had it. So we'll take a look at the scouting, make sure everything works. Sorry guys, got an important text message, so hang on as we simulate through a few days here. Yeah, that's fine. That's not really going to matter. And all right, he's waiting for his assignment, so let's give him one. Forwards in the OHL. For, let's say, six weeks. There we go. Update scouting assignment, and let's go. Let's get this going. We'll evaluate how everyone did once we get to the draft. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We've got AHL hockey games. Hold up. We'll actually take a look at how they can do. All right, looks like they are still playing hockey. And where is Hamilton? Hamilton is in seventh place. All right, that works for me. As if they can win the Calder Cup, that would be huge. And the next game against the Lake Erie Monsters might. What is going on? I was just an update, I guess. So that's all right. Maybe an update for NHL 15. Didn't know that was coming out. If it is, well, there we go. We just figured out a new update came out. So that's solid. And it doesn't look like we have any AHL hockey games to play. Looks like we got kicked out of 7th place. So this is going to be a boring April for hockey for the Habs. All the prospects are at a standstill now. Canadians failed to get into the playoffs with 40 wins. Hamilton failed to get in with 39 wins. This just sucks. I thought we had it. Canadians were set for a big playoff run this year, given what they did last year. If you looked at the real life stats, and if you're looking at real life Montreal, well, they are in first place and they can't even make it to the playoffs in NHL 15. I'm going to blame injuries. That's uh, the most common sense thing to do I could think of. So that's what I'm going to do. And. I guess we're going to have to make the choice. Do we rebuild next year? Where where do we go? We're like middle of the pack. We have to figure out if we're going to try and trade up for McKinnon, or not McKinnon, pardon me, for McDavid. And that could set up a whole new level for the franchise if we could get him. I, I feel that's too stereotypical to do, though. Go for McDavid. I'd, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable trying to do that. Maybe acquire them and trade them away for something huge? That seems like a good option. Maybe contend to win by acquiring the rights to McDavid by drafting him and then trading him away? That, I like the sounds of that. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do here. This is going to be an interesting draft. All right, next time the scout comes up, we have to give him an assignment. There we go. All right, scout. Let's go to the OHL. All right, six weeks? Yeah, you got this. You got this, even though it's only four weeks until the deadline. All right. So here we go. A 
can be a huge time for the Canadians. I, I'm honestly kind of speechless here trying to decide on what to do. Should we go with McDavid or should we go with another prospect, maybe a Jack Eichel? Go somewhere? I'm not sure. Philadelphia wins the cup. The Utica comments come in in the Calder Cup, so I couldn't have picked those teams if you tried. And it looks like Thomas Tatar is the or Tim Thomas, okay, never mind. That's a useless free agent. And Javi Bulin, even though he's useless. Tom Pyatt, Dennis Grebeshkov. Yeah, we don't want any of those. So we'll see who comes out of the Canadian Hockey League prospects game. That could be interesting. And we need to get younger. We're at 29.1 for average age. That is a little bit too old for my comfort zone. Uh, today's prospects game, we'll skip that. And Strom, Bittner, Dylan Strom wouldn't be a half bad pickup, I don't think. So, here we go. Retirees, yeah, we could have seen these guys coming. Goalies, Javi Bullen, LaBarbera, Nabokov, and Thomas. Yeah, good riddance. Trading block. All right, this, this is where it wants. Wants, surplus, trading block. Oh, Dustin Tokarski was on our trading block. Never mind. Ah, uh, let's go Peter Budai. And what else should we have up for trade? How about a Lars Eller type guy, 83 overall? Yes, I would like to commit those changes. All right, so actually we'll save the draft for next episode. So thank you for joining us here on Yak City Gaming. As always, please subscribe, leave a like on the video, and we'll talk to you next, guy, next time, guys. So long from Yak City.